I'll tell you what the problem is. Smartphone cameras are getting very, very good. Or at least they are on flagship devices. Now in order to make people buy their more profitable flagship phones, companies have to somewhat downgrade their more budget-oriented phones. And unfortunately, one of those places where those cuts come is in camera quality. So if you are still stuck on a budget phone like the G5 Plus over here, in this video I'm going to show you how you can still make some killer video footage. With that being said, let's get started. So when you ask a tech YouTuber how to improve the quality of videos on your smartphone, a lot of them will tell you straight away you should use a smartphone lens. But there are a few reasons why I think that's a bit of a fallacy and, to be honest, is not the best advice you could get. First of all, they're bulky. These things are a pain to carry around and people want to know how to take great video all the time. Because moments just occur. Moments that you want to capture, they just sort of appear and you can't often be prepared for it. So you can't be carrying around a lens everywhere you go, it's a bit of a problem. Now also, lenses technically don't improve the quality of your video footage itself. What they do is allow you to shoot in new scenarios. For example, a telephoto lens allows you to shoot from further away, or a wide angle lens allows you to capture more in your shot. But these don't make your video essentially better quality, they are just more different ways to shoot. Now the other thing worth bearing in mind is that buying a poor quality lens can actually reduce the quality of your video. Getting glass which has little bits inside of it or imperfections means that your video is distorted upon output. And if you want to buy a high-end lens, you can spend something like $50 for one piece of kit. So if you are going to spend that much on lenses, just buy a better phone in the first place. The second thing is going to seem super obvious, but just judging by the number of people that don't do this, clearly it isn't. You should always shoot your videos in horizontal mode. Shooting video in portrait just means that just about on every video sharing platform, you're just going to have these huge black bars on the sides of your content. And that never looks professional. So then we've got lighting. And I mean, everyone knows that more light is better when it comes to photography, but a lot of people don't know why. What happens when you reach a low light condition is your phone turns up its ISO setting. And what this does is it tries to group smaller pixels into larger pixels to be able to capture more light. But the trade-off is this results in more noise. So by providing more light to your smartphone sensor, you can essentially overcome this. You can reduce the need to group pixels together and therefore result in a clearer image. And so what this means is wherever possible, try and shoot outdoors. Natural light is the cheapest and easiest source of really good all-round lighting. So if you can use that, go ahead and do it. Now for videos like this, if you do need to shoot inside, then use a daylight bulb. Daylight bulbs provide firstly a lot of light, but also a lot of clean natural light. So that makes your video footage come out quite a bit clearer. So in terms of using lighting to create better smartphone video, there's one key thing to remember. Smartphones and budget smartphones especially are not endowed with the best HDR capabilities which means that if you are shooting a subject, make sure that instead of the light being behind the subject, which creates a very high dynamic range, which these smartphones can't tend to cope with, try and make sure the light is in front of the subject. And an example of when this could be pretty useful is when, for example, you're taking a shot of a group of people. And the number of times I've seen people do this such that there is light behind the subjects but not in front is crazy. So don't do that. So then there's stabilization. And for this, I'm gonna say there are three main topics. And the first one is this. This is an attachment that allows you to clip your smartphone onto a tripod. Now what this does allow you to do is to take super smooth, super steady footage. But the trade-off is that first of all, you need a tripod which is big, bulky and can be expensive, and you also need an adapter. So it's a bit of a faff to take around with you, and it's something that has to be quite pre-planned. So the second option is to use a three-axis gimbal. So this is the Xeon Smooth Q. Thoroughly recommend it. Um, over there I have the DJI Osmo as well. Both are fantastic. They're at different price points, but both create a transformative difference in the cinematic quality of your smartphone footage. Just look at the before and after here. So then we have something called electronic image stabilization. And with a lot of smartphones, especially lower end smartphones that don't have optical image stabilization, this effect is built in by default. And it can be effective, if, for example, you're holding your smartphone, you're consistently moving in a certain direction or you're tracking a certain object, then sometimes electronic image stabilization can reduce the shakiness in that. If, however, you're walking down a street and your phone is going like this and just jumping up and down, then actually all it's going to end up doing is making it seem very unreal. It's going to create a pretty poor attempt at trying to stabilize it, and in the end it's just going to look like it's heavily edited. And this is why with GoPros, for example, which are cameras meant to capture a lot of action, to capture running, skiing, jumping, all this kind of stuff, they tend to, by default, have a very minimal amount of electronic image stabilization, because in those kind of shots where there's so much action, 
you're probably better off without it. And then probably the most overlooked aspect of taking good quality video is sound quality. So with this simple attachment here, it splits the 3.5 millimeter connection on your smartphone into input and output. So you can plug in a high quality pair of headphones into the output section, and you can plug in a high quality microphone into the input. And if you are trying to take cinematic quality video, which includes audio, then this is an absolute necessity. Get one of these and then get a decent quality microphone. The one I've got here is the Mod Mic 5, and there are plenty of others. So the next tip I'm about to tell you is probably my favorite tip of all time. What you can do is shoot your smartphone video at 30 frames per second as normal, but then when you put that video into your video editor, slow it down to 80% of its original speed, i.e. 24 frames per second. So what that does is actually creates a slight amount of slow motion in the video, which number one is cinematic in itself, number two hits the target frame rate of 24 frames per second, and number three, just because everything's moving a little bit slower, your video is actually more stabilized. And so depending on what your end objective for this video is, you may want to continue making it more cinematic. Now one way of doing this is to change the aspect ratio from a 16 to 9, which is a standard out of a phone like this, to a 21 to 9. That is considered a cinematic ratio, and that creates these known black bars on the top and the bottom of the video, which some people like, some people hate, and it's up to your discretion whether or not you want to use them. And so the other thing is color correction. Depending on the kind of look you're trying to create, you might want to add warmth to a certain shot, for example, or you might want to take it away. Anyway, guys, I really hope you enjoyed that video. I've got tons more videos like this, tutorials, other things that you can do with your smartphone, which are genuinely really useful. So with that being said, I really hope you check those out. I'm Mr. Who's the Boss, and I'm signing out.